Hi guys and welcome to this video and this is going to be um, a not in-depth video about my newly received 3D printer. It's a Creality Ender 3. I'm completely new to all of this so um, if you want to ask me any questions feel free to ask me any questions after this video. I will answer to the best of my ability but if you actually want to know uh, what's what with these things I highly recommend looking at this guy's channel um, and if you search for Neris, uh, N-E-R-Y-S and, uh, and what this guy does not know about uh, the Creality 3D printers is probably not worth knowing. He's very knowledgeable indeed. Uh, that's what I've got there is his live stream where he actually unboxed and built one live on a live stream and did some prints and I've watched that a couple of times and I will be watching that during the building of mine. I won't be showing the building. You don't want to see me have to take all this out of the box in bits and pieces and bolt everything together and what have you. There's stacks of videos on YouTube of people doing that. If you want to know how to do that, that's exactly what I'm doing there. I'm watching Neris's video of the construction to make sure that I pick up any hints and tips as I go along. But uh, but yeah, essentially, nice big box and bag of goodies, including a free small sample of filament. I've already got some spools of filament, which I've ordered from 3DQF, which apparently is a good one if you are in the UK. So uh, we'll know how good they are when I've got all this together and we start printing. So... There we go. So once I've got it all together, we'll uh, we'll have another video and uh, hopefully a little bit of a time lapse of it printing. So catch you in a moment. The printer's assembled. Um, as I said, this is not going to be a, a how-to or anything. There's loads of stuff out there, and uh, this I'm new to all this. So, but I'm just going to go over a few little bits and pieces that uh, might be of use to some of you um, who's get who are getting one. Um, the first of all, this is the what people are calling the updated model. It's got a, a better sealed in SD slot. Uh, it's got a removable uh, build plate with these little clips. It's got um, a, a, an ABS cover on the power supply, apparently, uh, which the older one didn't. And um, and I think this is a beefed up tensioner as well, I've, I've heard mentioned. This was already pre-assembled, pre so I'm assuming that that's all okay. And it's kind of, tension-wise, feels okay. Uh, the build was quite straightforward. If you've ever built a model kit or and or a piece of IKEA furniture, um, the instructions are actually very straightforward. There are detailed instructions on the SD card, I didn't have to look at those. But using the supplied sheet, which is picture by picture, um, and all of the bags with the bolts and fasteners are labelled. They all, they all they tell you what's in there, so you don't have to go measuring to see which are which when you're fastening it all together. So between those instructions and Neris's video, and a couple of other videos, but Neris's particularly the live stream one where he built the Ender 3 out of the box, which was amazingly useful. So a big thanks to him. Uh, I, I basically followed that, worked, I had that playing in the background while I was putting mine together, picked up little bits of uh, hints and tips as I went along from that. One thing to mention, he mentions the heat block, <coughs> uh, the hot end and then the, the bit with the cooling fins above it. I'm not sure of all the names exactly yet, but he said some of those are coming from the factory with two screws installed, one either side. That's actually there to aid factory installation. Those two screws shouldn't be there. That's either side of the, of the nozzle. So mine had those, so I went ahead and removed those. It does mean you might have to cut the tape that holds the cotton um, uh, heat protection or uh, insulation, that's the word I'm looking for, around the heat block. So you might need to retape that. Just make sure you retape that onto the cotton, obviously, not, not the heat block itself. Um, and w the small Allen key will, will fit those. And... Uh, and pop those out, I've just thrown those in one of the spare bags. And um, everything else was pretty straightforward really. All of the labels have got a little clip on that show you where they plug in, you just follow the instructions for where they plug in. And I've powered this up and switched it on just to make sure that there's power going to it. But it was late last night, so at that point I decided it was too late to, to be messing and potentially damage something. I thought at that point I will leave well alone 
and go to bed and when I'm a bit more refreshed in the morning go ahead do the rest of it and pop, uh, put some filament on and what have you. So the only thing to note the bed wasn't the, the base wasn't flat so I've just put that on my glass halogen hob which is obviously the flattest thing I had around. Undid the two allen bolts either side wiggled it until it was flat, tightened those up, that's nice and easy. This had a little bit of a wobble in that direction and that direction, so I tightened up the uh, the wheels, which are the four square rather than the old rhombus design. Apparently, I don't know if that's better or not, but that was easy enough, just as per Neris's video, just nip them up a little bit until they grip enough so that they don't wobble or wiggle about. Same with these, I did have a little bit of a problem with these uprights, either side. I got them to line up so that uh, initially I put them on and there was only a sixteenth of an inch of difference top and bottom which I thought well that's great because I know Neris had to shim his because one was sticking out but what I did notice is they were sort of twisted in they were canted in like that by the time I got to putting this on so I went ahead and put this on and I noticed it was really really stiff and really hard to fit on and then um, realized that as I was trying to tension these thinking it was these that were sticking realized that it was actually these that were cantered so I had to undo, I fitted the top bar under and left these these two bolts and these two bolts slack and then the two bolts underneath slacking them off and I had to physically sort of twist them back in and then tighten them back up. That bit I could have used an extra pair of hands for so if you're building one of these and you have an extra pair of hands around um, it's and yours needs that it's handy to have an extra pair of hands either to do the twisting and holding or to do the tightening whichever. Um, so yeah, I could have used that, that would have been very handy. But I tightened everything back up and then I was able to sort of tension these so that so that this runs a bit more smoothly. Um, and tensioned all the pulleys and everything the same. And fitted the belt after this was all fitted on except the tensioner. Um, the belt slots through nice and easy, plenty of room, hooks in down there, around there, hooks in. And then you can fit the tensioner on and pull it tight and bolt that up tight. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Make sure that your voltage selector obviously is set for your relevant country at the back. And, uh, and that's about it. So what I'm going to do now is switch it on and do the um, homing thing. Uh, I know it's supposed to sort of check all the axes, check all the end stops and, and home sort of off the bed down here. So fingers crossed that's what it's going to do. Uh, this is the bit where I'm, I just hope it doesn't sort of smash into the bed. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I shouldn't laugh when I say things like that really. Uh, anyway, fingers crossed on that one. So we're plugged in down there. Switch on. All the fans sort of spin up, including the one down there. That's I'm assuming that's kind of like a self-test thing. It's showing the temperatures of the nozzle bed, fan speed, and uh, F F that's feed rate, I think. Um, yeah, feed rate. I, 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 these, this is things I know just from watching videos, by the way. I, uh, I say completely new to this, so don't assume for a minute that I know what I'm talking about on this particular thing. Um, right, so prepare. There we go, auto home. That's the one I want. So... Okay. Okay, all right, that's that's doing pretty much what I've seen others do on YouTube, so. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but is that, is that rail moving a little bit more slowly than some of the others I've seen on YouTube when it does the auto home? I don't know. I might have to watch another couple of videos and see that, but that, that seems to be going down slower than some of the others I've seen. Um, I mean, it's working, so I'm not sort of bothered in that respect, but but then of course that one's driven by a, a threaded bar rather than a belt, isn't it? So maybe it's something to do with that, I don't know. Uh, if anyone knows and wants to drop in a comment regarding that, please do. And yeah, the nozzle's gonna clear the bed, that's, that's all good. That's Oh good, that's cool. Right, so uh, so yeah, so the next thing I need to do is get uh, try and get a hold of Neris's um, 3D bed leveling Marvin file, 
which is one of, which is the first thing I want to use to try it because it's it's a nice simple one and it doesn't take too long. Um, I might print the dog that's on the card, but apparently that's quite a long print, so I don't really want to use that as a first print. So I need to get a hold of that and then go through the process of installing the filament. I'm not going to go into any more detail about that because, as I say, I don't want to make this a hugely long video. This was just about a new uh, 3D printer user setting everything up. I have got a list of files on, on Thingiverse that I want to print already, of course. And um, so hopefully in, we'll be back in a moment and the next clip should show us uh, printing something. <laughs> 